Kenya belongs to God. Kenya is God's altar. Hata ukimuliza huyo jaji aliyefanya huo uamuzi, atajiuliza mtoto wake akiwashoga. Atafurai. Huyo jaji atafurai. Hawezi furai. Kama hawezi furai, nini ilimfanya akai akai legalize? Ukimuliza atakwambia mimi sijui, hakukuwa na mtu wa kuipinga. You don't defile the land. When the land belongs to the Lord, you don't defile it. When you legalize this thing, kwa koti za Kenya, mumejenga madhibau ya ushoga kwa Kenya. Usipo iweka legal, haimanishi umedina is right. Sikia, kuna watu wamezaliwa Kenya na wana vitambulisho. Si wanaishi. Hamezaliwa Kenya na hana birth certificate. Si wanaishi. Si ni mkenya. Lakini haja pewa cheti chababu ajafuata legal procedures kupata cheti. Ikiwa Kenya sheria yake inasema ili upate cheti cha mzaliwa ni vyema uzaliwe fuata hiyo. Ukipereka kotini mukaiweka ligo na waambia pesa itamwagwa Kenya ya kutengeneza usherati Kenya ya kutengeneza ushoga Kenya lakini hao hata wa mashoga hawataki Kenya ni ya Mungu na Kenya itafuata ya Mungu vitu vitachafuka kila mahali lakini east itabakia ile roho ya Mungu west ikiharibika watakimbilia east Kenya ibakie ya Yesu Kristo it is a spiritual problem let us also tackle it spiritually. Let us give them spiritual treatment for spiritual healing. Because this thing is spiritual. Mutu alie na maumbiwile ya kiume, hakienda kuwa mwanaume mwenzake. Iyo ni kimwili ama ni kiroo. Ni kiroo. Kwa hivyo, let us not approach it physically. Chukulia uyo mtoto wa mutu kuwa wako. First. Then approach the problem. That is not a window to allow evil altars of homosexuality and lesbianism zijengwe Kenya. Let us pray about this issue. Because if we don't pray about this issue and take it to God's altar, evil altars will penetrate. Kitambo usikie koti ya Kenya judge wa Kenya anayejua maadili yote aseme tuwape ruhusa ujue it is spiritual hata huko kwa ikoti usifungue mlango ukifungua mlango hata wewe inamaanisha umejenga hiyo madhibau kwa hiyo nchi hata wewe utajishtukia utaota hizo ndoto za ushoga utafanya nini mimi nikuulize angelikuwa ni mke wako amekwambia bwanangu mimi nasikia kukaa kimwili na mwanamke mwenzangu. Hey, 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 hey. A, 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 a. Na ikiwa ni wewe umejisikia kukaa na mwanaume mwenzako, utafanya nini? Let us think seriously. This thing is spiritual. It is attacking God's altar. Kenya is in the east. Israel is in the east. Hata kwingine kwote kukichafuka, east ni lazima ibakie safi ndio kwingine kote kuchafuka watakimbilia east wise men came from the east they did not come from madness and abuse and have uh, allowed lgbtq to be registered as a ngo in this country one of the question i ask the chief justice because i called her personally and i asked yesterday in the when an association is registered the articles of associations are clear because they spell out what that association is going to be. If you register a football club, we all know they are going to play football, isn't it? If you register uh, a circle, we all know that they are going to lend money and keep credit for people and uh, help people acquire loans. And that's why the articles of association will spell out. And I asked the Chief Justice, and I'm asking Kenyans, 
what are the articles of association of LGBTQ? Well, we all know that they promote homosexuality, and I ask the Chief Justice, is homosexuality no longer a crime? She says it is a crime. Then how do you legalize people who are going to promote the crime? Then I ask her the second question. Now that you have registered them, using the article that Kenya has freedom of association, when bandits in West Pokot want to register a bandit association, are you going to register them? When Al-Shabaab want to be registered as an association, are we going to register them? Or Mongiki or any other outlawed group? These are the questions we must ask ourselves as a Christian family. This attack is not just an attack on humanity, but an attack on creation and the creator himself. Because God did not make a mistake to pronounce that Adam is lonely and when he was looking for a helper, he did not go for another man. He went for a woman. The West is introducing new agenda items in the Christian church. And one of the table already in discussion is to bring what they call gender neutral language and change the Bible to remove anything male or female. And the same question I ask, what will become of our doctrine of the Trinity? where we believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How will we recite our creeds, which is the fundamental of our faith? I believe in God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth, and in the Son, Jesus Christ. The Son is a male. Then I ask, the Bible is full of personal stories. How will you tell the story of Abraham? How will we tell the story of Moses? How will we refer to Moses? What name are we going to give to him? Or Jeremiah? Or Deborah? Because they want to remove both male and female. Or if, what are we going to do? Friends, the devil is on the offensive attacking the Christian faith. Let us stand firm in prayer and deepen our faith in the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it's crystal clear that Kenyan judiciary, led by Chief Justice Martha Kome, is rotten to the core if the spiritual warnings from the New Life Prayer Center Pastor Ezekiel Odero and Jackson Olesapit, the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Kenya, is anything to go by. From these warnings, it's no secret that there is a big problem in the judiciary of Kenya when it comes to decisions that have far-reaching consequences to Kenyans across the nation like giving members of LGBTQ rights to register their organization and association, meaning they can now recruit members openly and freely, hence entrenching and promoting homosexuality and lesbianism in Kenya contrary not only to the dictates of the Bible and the Quran, but also against beliefs, culture and traditions of Africans. The two pastors are very concerned as the decision by judiciary was out of context. I must repeat, there is a big problem in the Kenyan judiciary when it comes, simply put it, legalizing the immorality in the country. I must repeat, there is a big problem when it comes to the delivery of justice in the Kenyan judiciary. Let's continue to listen to the statements of the two spiritual leaders, Bishop Olesapit and Pastor Ezekiel Odero. And that's how God has designed it. And if we go against the natural order that human beings, animals, 
and even plant science is telling us today the pollens have both a male and a female and until the male part of the pollens meet the female part of the pollen fertilization happens and bearing of seed will happen so how can we allow ourselves to go against the natural order God has created and pursue things that do not satisfy because I don't think a gay relationship satisfy it's a fallacy it is uh, you know it is just driven by money and people who want to pervert what Christian faith is all about what I want to say is that let us stand firm the Christian family and say no to what is not right before God is the door that was used in South Africa to legalize and whatever is happening is progressive implementation of that law meaning that if we do not rise they have a better place legally to pass the matter I would like to you because of the case, case of a generation constitutionally you can't fire judges they are there until they are 75 years old so meaning that the nation can be in a judicial ransom until 75, a man enters 75. There is another option and that option is repent or, or, or justice. You can exit from that seat because we are dealing with human rights. It cannot be changed in, in parliament. It needs referendum. Even if it means spending billions, we better die of hunger than die of corruption. So when these hashtags come on Twitter, let us arise, let us riot. Kenya cannot be a dumping site. Are we together? Our voice must be heard. We are here for such a time as this. It is either revival or revolution. If it means in these 10 years we change that constitution, we are ready. And when, when any man dies in that bench, because they will die, we need men that are born of God. Yes. They will die. I, I'm speaking under the anointing. This is a battle of a generation. Viewers, wherever you are watching this channel it's quite disturbing to hear how the west are influencing critical decisions that have far-reaching implications on kenyans why is the kenyan judiciary substituting kenyan culture traditions with the ones from the western nations why is money being used to manipulate important decisions to enable immorality thrive in Kenya? Why is all this happening under the new regime of Kenya Kwanza? Is the acceptance and the entrenchment of LGBTQ the reason behind President William Samueruto's darling with the Western nations led by the United States of America because this type of immorality of a man making love with fellow man or a woman making love with her fellow woman has its home in the Western nations it's only recognized in america and other western nations so kenyan judiciary can be manipulated to this extent is this justice really kenyan neighboring country uganda just banned such immorality and after outcry, I think some donations from the Western nations were stopped immediately. Is American hand being spotted in this type of decisions from Kenyan courts? Because this thing happened when the first lady of the United States of America visited Kenya. There are allegations that legalizing LGBTQ comes with huge monetary donations. If so, who is going to benefit 
from that and block procreation in Kenya. I can remember very well that Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president of the Republic of Kenya, was once upon a time asked about giving rights to the LGBTQ members. And this is how he responded. The fact of the matter is that Kenya and the United States, we share so many values. Our common love for democracy, entrepreneurship, value for families. These are things that we share. But there are some things that we must admit we don't share. Our culture, our societies don't accept. It's very difficult for us to be able to impose on people that which they themselves do not accept. This is why I repeatedly say that for Kenyans today, the issue of gay rights is really a non-issue. We want to focus on other areas that are day-to-day -day living for our people. The fact remains that this issue is not really an issue that is on the foremost mind of Kenyans, and that is the fact. To this end, ladies and gentlemen, kindly drop your thoughts in the comments section of this video. You can state whether you support or you don't support LGBTQ and why. Kindly, let's continue with this conversation in the comments section of this video.